Hey, what's up YouTube? It's your girl Alicia. If you need my guide, subscribe if you have, tap the little button to stay updated. What's it like being legally blind? I wanted to answer that question as well as some of the others you have for someone like me. So let's get right into it. What is it like being legally blind? I would say it's weird. I've been living with Stargirl's disease for about eight years now and I've been legally blind for around three and I'm not used to it. Sometimes I even forget that I can't see something. Like I'll pick up a book and be like, what, what, what am I doing? So let's just go through my day-to-day -day activities to give you an idea of what it's like to live life legally blind. When I wake up, which by the way, I've already done a wake up blind video if you wanna check the link over here. Pretty much I keep it simple and keep it moving. It's the best way for me to get a good start on my day and just keeping things simple and minimal, especially with the makeup, just keeps me from losing my mind. There's been times when I fought with my liquid liner for an hour and it's still been like that, so. Navigation is an interesting one. It can be a little annoying being partially sighted and going from point A to point B, but it's not impossible. Luckily, I live in a city that has a very accessible transit. That is probably the only thing that is good about the TTC. Ask anyone who lives in Toronto. It is the most unreliable transit. I don't know how they got a ward for 2000, whatever year it was, because everyone in the six is like, how sway? What I love about it is it has audio announcements on the subways, the buses, and the streetcars to let you know what stop it is. Sometimes the bus drivers turn it off and it really annoys me because it's like, <laughs> There's been times when I've gone on a bus that's short turning and had to get off and then walk a really long way to catch another bus to go the way I originally intended to. Yeah, this happened quite a bit. Thank you, bus driver. But other than that, like TTC really helps me get from point A to point B. I wouldn't say quickly, but in one piece. I like to use the street views on Google Maps, especially if I'm going somewhere I've never been before. That way I can get a better idea of where I'm supposed to be because building numbers don't work for me. I have to go like all the way up here and if there's someone on the other side of the door, they think I'm like this really weird, creepy girl going all the way up just to see the door number. Walking around, I'm pretty good. Like I don't need a white cane yet. I can still see where curbs and steps are. It is a little tricky in like a dimly lit places or where the steps are the same color as the rest of the floor. I'm like, Ugh. but other than that, like I'm okay. Crosswalks are a little tricky. I have a system of looking at the crosswalk above my head if the one across me is too far away to see. Believe it or not, it's actually easier for me to navigate at nighttime. I never really go based on street signs because even the large ones I can't see anymore. So for me at nighttime, there's less glare from say the sun and less distractions. It's also usually quieter and calmer. How do I cook? <laughs> Cooking is the reason why my thumbnails don't grow. If I ever forget, because I do sometimes that I can't see well, and I'm trying to cut like a master chef, which I was never good at cooking before, so I don't know why I think I would be now. Sometimes I do cut off some of my nail. It's not a good look. <laughs> so I try to be patient, take my time with it. As far as cooking, stove top or oven goes, I go closer to turn the dial, to turn on the digital temperature gauge for the oven. And if I think it's done cooking, five minutes more. I don't like my stuff well done, but I also don't want to die young, so I try to find a healthy need. Work. Repetitive. <laughs> We're being real with this one. I've been working the same job for eight years. It's easy. I'm a wine fairy hostess, so I work at a restaurant, and what I do is I go into the wine cellar, I'll restock wines, I'll put them in the place that they're supposed to go, and I'll pull them down when servers need them for guests. How I do that when I can't see wine labels? Uh, well, we have a book that we all use. I can't see the book, so I usually ask them to tell me what they're looking for. If I remember the name of the wine, I'll go and grab it. If not, I'll ask them to tell me what it is in the directory, because it goes by alphabetical and numerical order. And then I'll go to column nine, row five, for example, for E5, and I'll select that wine, and usually, usually it's the right one. I also use an iPad, three fingers, double tap, zoom in. Most of my coworkers know to zoom out. Sometimes they get trapped and I think it's kind of funny. Most of the people I work with, managers, coworkers, understand. Sometimes guests come in and they make comments and I'm like, sorry, I'm legally blind. Keep them moving. Dating, going out, friends, all that social. I would say that the only insecurity that I've had and one thing that I really hate about Stargirl's disease is my lack of holding eye contact or not being sure that I'm even doing it. I pride myself in being a very loyal, honest person and eye contact is one of the physical cues for indicating that you are loyal, you are honest, and you are attentive. And sometimes I feel like I'm not maintaining it so it's a little distracting when I'm having conversations, especially romantic ones. But other than that, like, it's whatever. And meeting up with people. I try to get there first, but sometimes the hair takes a little while to dry. If I'm the second person there, well, I just do my best, try to see, but I can only really see someone if they're this close in front of me. I'm not about saying hi to the wrong person because I've done that way too much. Social media, phones, and tech. My iPhone zooms in quite a bit. I don't like doing DMs on Instagram just because the actual text doesn't zoom in. So I've been telling the same friend like 99 times, 
stop sharing things on there. It's actually larger on my iMessage as well. YouTube, editing, filming, all of that. A lot of it's memory. I just do what I can. I can't see the camera. I'm really hoping I'm holding eye contact. Sometimes I'm like looking over here, but I'm, I think I'm looking here. I don't know. I'm using the same kind of camera. So some of the functions have switched over. I really don't mess with it too much. Everything's on auto and I go from there. That's why sometimes the stuff is looking a little blurry and zooming in a lot when it comes to editing. A lot, a lot of zooming in and out a lot and I do the best I can because that's all you can do is the best you can. When it's time to pay for something, I like to tap it, just keep it simple. Luckily, Canada's currency, our cash bills are colored so I can tell based on the color what I'm paying someone with. When I go to the States or anywhere else, I'm like, Ugh. I try to like put them in different spots in my wallet so I know where my 20s and my 50s and fives are. Otherwise, I'd be giving people the wrong my coins. I like to size them up and people always look at me sideways when I do this, but I'm not trying to give someone a quarter when I'm only trying to give them a nickel. When I'm at a restaurant, I want to insert so I can actually tip them. I don't go based on the pre-selected tips because I don't know what they actually say. I pick the fourth option, which is always custom, and then I enter the tip that I want because I work in the industry, so I know as it goes. I don't want to under tip, and there's been times when I've overdone, and I zoom in on the receipt when I'm done so I know that I did it right. Reading. I've had a friend give me a book for Christmas, and I'm like, did they, did they forget? I read on my iPhone Google Books, 220 percent i also use a magnifying app if i'm out and i need to zoom in to read an ingredient or instructions or something and that's how i read <laughs> i don't really like audiobooks i feel like the person speaking takes me off from the story but sometimes i do do it shopping i used to love shopping i worked at the Ean center which is one of the largest malls in toronto for years when i was in uni and when I went to that uni, it was also like two minutes away from the mall. So I was always in the mall, even when I wasn't working. I used to love shopping, feeling the textures, trying things on. Now I hate that ish. I'm all about online shopping because I can see the size and the price before I fall in love with the item. And I'm like, I can't, I can't afford to pay that right now. Instead of having an internal battle, it's just easier online than I can make up my mind and take my time with the purchase and know what I'm getting. There's been times when I bought the wrong thing too, especially if it's something that involves fine print. <laughs> you know the best way to describe how I see is actually that smoothing effect on Facetune when you want to like smooth out an acne. I can never see anyone's zits or wrinkles because everything just smooths out. It's not blurry, it's just smooth. Smooth. So that's my life legally blind. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, let me know by hitting the like button and comment down below if you have any more questions or comments. Until next time, love and